Hello, everyone. My name is Jing Gao from IQVIA. I'm glad to introduce our work, TopNet, Population Level Disease Prediction with Data Latency. This research is a joint work with Illinois at Urbana Champaign and IQVIA. Pandemic diseases such as the novel coronavirus diseases, COVID-19, has been spreading rapidly across the world and poses a severe threat to global public health. It caused significant disruption to people's daily life, as well as substantial economic loss. Therefore, it tracks the spatial and temporal disease progression patterns and conducting accurate location-wise population-level disease prediction is critical. Generally, population-level disease prediction is a regression task based on historical disease statistics, demographics, and other features. The target outputs are number of cases of target disease for future several days. Accurate prediction results can help optimize medical resources and select appropriate clinical trial sites. However, this is not a straightforward task and there are still lots of challenges remain to be solved. First is how to incorporate the updated data into the real-time model. From the temporal perspective, a real-time model needs to be updated whenever an update is made to the historical data. So concretely speaking, traditional disease prediction assumes the data received are reliable and accurate, which is often not true. In practice, the data collection is time consuming and has time delays. Thus, the disease statistics require continuous update to become more and more accurate. For example, the disease statistics we received at day one may be get updated in following several days, and the same for day two, day three, and day four. So such a data latency issue needs to be considered in population level predictions. Besides, different locations may be updated at different frequencies, which increase the complexity of data updating. The second challenge is to extract data update patterns. We identify three major data updating patterns in this task. First is spatial correlation. The geographically close locations may have uh, similar data updating patterns. The second is seasonality. The disease progression patterns are highly seasonality related. The third is disease correlation patterns, which means the similar disease should have similar update patterns. Here are some of the related works. There are many research combines graph structures with temporal statistics to model regional and temporal population and achieve more accurate prediction for disease prediction. However, the previous mentioned the data latency challenge still exists. In this paper, we propose the PopNet to address these challenges. First, let's take an overview for our model. Our model has two inputs. The first input is the disease statistic data which is a 3D tensor. The three dimensions are time, locations, and features. So we use the notations to, to, denote, the, uh, to denote the slice from the tensor from different dimensions. We also have a second input, which is the updated disease data U. This is a little bit complex. So for example, uh, U is also a 3D tensor. And Every tensor element in X may be updated at a future time step. So we use this UIT to denote data updated for location I at a future time T. So if UIT replies, replaces FIJ, then we define uh, the data latency, the data update latency is delta, T, I, is delta IT. So delta IT equals to T minus J. So there is um, no, all elements in U have numbers. So value, value zero in U means there is no updates for those tensor elements, which means the, uh, the value in the X it, uh, is the ground truth number. So we don't need any, any further update for that value. Um, so for the prediction target, we use the number of cases for target disease in future error days as our prediction target. So Y is a matrix, is N by L. Our PopNet model consists of two graph attention networks to receive real data type, real time data X and updated time, updated data U respectively. 
it used two uh, latency aware attention mechanism to feel spatial and temporal imbalance respectively while considering the data updated. So first we build the location graph based on location geographic similarity and fed the input data into two graph attention network. And after obtaining all the node embeddings in the graph attention network, we utilize the updated historical data to make, to make better predictions. So to incorporate the complex latency patterns, we design the spatial latency aware attention mechanism, the SLATT to feel spatial embeddings. So first, we compute the spatial information embedding. The spatial information embedding includes populations, the number of hospitals and ICU beds. Then we concat the information embedding with the original node embedding to generate the attention score. This attention score is also regularized by updated latency, data updated latency. So intuitively, the longer the latency is, the smaller the marginal influence the new data will have on our final prediction. And finally, we aggregate all uh, node embeddings from two graph attention network with the attention score. So this spatial latency aware attention is basically a cross graph attention mechanism to aggregate node embeddings from, uh, from the updated graph. In addition to spatial patterns, we also employ the gated recurrent unit networks to extract the temporal patterns based on the learned spatial embeddings from each node. Similarly, we also learn the temporal information back for each node. So remember our second challenge. We want to extract seasonality patterns and disease correlations. Here, the dilated uh, convolutional net neural network with different dilation rates helps extract temporal patterns from different time scales. The larger the filter's receptive field is, making the convolutional filter extract temporal patterns from a broader time scale. So, we use a combination of different phi, which means the dilation rate, to extract patterns in different time scales to capture the seasonality. Besides, the learned feature maps are also reweighted to select the most inf informative patterns based on the historical average value of each disease statistics. This enables the model to capture disease correlations. Finally, similar to the spatial latency of your attention, we use uh, this learned temporal information embedding to enrich the temporal latency of your attention. And we also use the time latency to regularize the attention score and generate the final, uh, the final prediction. We conduct our experiment on the claims data set collected from IQV. This data set consists of more than 2,000 counties in the United States from 2018. We aggregate the ICD-10 codes in the claims data into 21 categories, which include 17 diseases and four other codes. We report the experiments in the main paper for two diseases, which is respiratory disease and tumors. So for the respiratory disease, the updated latency is larger because the, the number of cases is much larger and the data collection takes time. But for tumors, the number of cases is much less, is much fewer. So the updated latency is smaller, which takes about uh, seven weeks to fully collect it, all data. We also release a synthetic data set. Basically, we randomly aggregate data from different locations and different days, and we add random noise. We also report the experimental result on this synthetic data set. Here are our experiment settings. We train our model on 60 weeks of data and we use 20 weeks of data for validation and last 20 weeks of data for testing. So all baseline models can access the same data. For baseline models, we simply concatenate the real-time data and the updated data to fit into the model. And we use RMC, MAE, and MAT to evaluate our model. This is our prediction performance. We achieve uh, more than 40% lower RMC on the respiratory disease and more than 20% lower RMC on tumorous disease. We also report a graph about our prediction performance on all 17 diseases. You can see PopNet achieves better performance on all disease categories compared to the best 
baseline model. We also evaluate the popnet performance at different locations. So we achieve the best performance on over 90% locations. On these locations, we achieve more than 10% lower MAPE than the best baselines. Our model also supports the efficiency turtle training. Here, we simulate the real world deployment setting. Then we fine tune the trained model on the newly added data. So for regular training process, the model can access the entire training data set. So there are two phases. We use week, week one to week 80 to train the model and we evaluate the model on the last 20 weeks data. This is a regular setting. But for iterative training setting, which is more close to real world settings, the model is first trained on the first 50 weeks of data and test on three weeks of data. And then we, during this time, we may have collected another bunch of data. So we can fine tune our model with this newly added data. So we use data from 60 to 80 to fine tune the model and make the final prediction on the same last uh, testing set. So we evaluate the model under this setting. Here are the results. Um, the yellow bars denotes the model performance trend on the entire data set. Of course, it, have, it should have lower MAE because the model can access the entire larger and longer data set. But as you can see, our model can achieve almost the equivalent performance using both settings. When, when the model is trained on the iterative data set, it, it is much more efficient. It takes less than four gigabytes memory and, and much less time to train the model compared to trained on a much larger entire data set. And the finally, we, we predict uh, we evaluated the model with longer prediction window. Instead of only predict the number of cases in the next one week, we made the model predict the number of cases in future five weeks. So our model can achieve stable performance with longer prediction window. And here are the conclusion. In this work, we propose a PopNet model. It is a real-time population level disease prediction model with considering data latency. We model the real time and uploaded up and updated disease statistics data with spatial and temporal latency aware cross graph attention. And we extract complex data update patterns, which is spatial, seasonality, and disease correlation patterns. Our model also supports the efficient model updating mechanism. And we achieve the lowest prediction error on 17 diseases. Thank you. Our model, uh, the, the source code of our model is public available, available at GitHub. And thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you. Do we have questions? Don't be shy. Why the audience is thinking, I may ask a question. So can you can you tell us a bit more on this iterative training that you did? So I, I saw in the paper that you also proposed an algorithm how this should work. Uh, oh, yeah, yes, yes, we, we propose that. But I, I don't uh, discuss it detailed in the presentation because of time limit. So mm -hmm. basically the idea, the idea is we learn a uh, alignment function between between this, uh, between the learned temporal information embedding and the and the learned uh, the and the hidden state of the GRU, because if we learn that for when learning the temporal information embedding, we only use convolutional neural network, which is much more efficient than the recurrent neural network, because the recurrent neural network it, it have to iteratively iteratively training on a long sequence data, which is uh, highly time consuming, but with a convolutional neural network, uh, we can train much quicker. So if we align this embedding with the hidden state of GRU, we can use we can use the learned embedding of uh, the learned embedding by CNN, and uh, we use this embedding to initialize the hidden state of GRU. So at, uh, so under this setting, we 
uh, when training other new data, we do not, uh, our model do not need to access the uh, old long historical data. We can uh, directly start training on the other new data while maintain a good prediction performance. Okay, thank you.